Hello and welcome to Transform Tuesday. I'm Dave McCormick, VP of Product Management here at Alpha Software, and I'm pleased to be joined today by Sarah Mitchell, Head of Documentation, as well as Scott Allen from our Graphic Design Department. Sarah today will be continuing our series on the Transform Programming Language, and today we are up to part, I think it's four, but I do know that it's on objects and arrays, and you can do an awful lot of cool stuff with this. So I can't wait to get started. I saw a preview of the presentation, and I think you're going to find it very useful. So let's get started. Hello, Sarah. Are you there? I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. So let me go ahead and make you the presenter. And I should see it. You should see a dialog box on your screen. And you and should see your screen. I see your I see your PowerPoint. Yep. All right. I'm starting to get the hang of this. <laughs> All right. So yeah, welcome to Transform Tuesday. As Dave mentioned, uh, I will be continuing the conversation on the Transform programming language. Uh, and today we're going to talk about objects and arrays. Objects and arrays are data structures. Um, they're a special data type that can contain a lot of different values. Um, and these two data structures have uh, two distinct um, features. Um, the first one, objects, uh, is a collection of values. Uh, values are usually related, but sometimes it's just a collection of random values. Uh, they're created using the object function in TPL, and they're accessed using what is called dot notation. So in this example here, uh, I've got this object called x that I've created. It's empty. And then I add two values to it, uh, two uh, properties uh, is how some people refer to them. And the first one is a, and you see dot a is the creation of that. And then I assign it to the value one. And then the sec second one is b, uh, assigned to the value two. The other data type is arrays. Uh, arrays are a list of values. Uh, the list is usually all the same type, like all integers are all strings. Like the objects in TPL, they are created using a function called array. Um, and they're accessed, you access the values in an array using bracket notation. Uh, and the, the value that goes in the bracket is the index of the value in the array. Uh, array indices start at zero. So the first value is going to be zero. The second value will be one. The uh, third will be two, and so on and so forth. So here, in this example, I've created an array called numbers. It has the values one through five. And if I wanted to get the value of the second number in the numbers array, I would use one as the index. So that's that second line there. Numbers bracket one bracket will return the value two. So before we get into any live demos today, I just wanted to go through um, all the um, common functions that are available to you for arrays. Uh, we're going to look at object arrays, which I'll talk about uh, after we go through these here in a moment. But these are um, these uh, these functions are the ones that you're probably most likely going to use, uh, and they're functions that you may see uh, in other programming language languages like JavaScript or uh, Python. Um, they, are, they perform very common functions that you see across the board. So the array function, uh, which I mentioned earlier, is what you call to create a new array. It can be used in two ways. It can be used to create a new empty array, or you can give it a list of values to create a new array that already has content in it. And that list of values is specified as each value in the function call with a comma. And you can have as many of those as you want. So here in this example, I've created a places array, and it's got three values, uh, London, Kiev, and Sydney. If I wanted to have 20 countries, I would have the other, or not countries, places <laughs> in this array. I would just add more uh, commas and names after that. Um, arrays. Uh, when you want to work with arrays, one thing that you may need to know is how long it is, uh, especially if you're using it in a for loop. Uh, len, the len function, will return the number of elements in the array. So here I've got an example. Uh, this is a colors array. It's got 
red, orange, yellow, green, blue in it. And if I call len on here, it returns five because that's how many values are in the array. If you want to add a value to an existing array, there are several functions you can use. One of them is push and the other one is insert. Push will add a value, one or more, to the end of the array. And insert will insert values at a specific location within the array. And with insert, uh, you need to specify where in the array you want to put those values. So in this example here, we've got our colors array with our basic red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Array push will add purple to the end after blue. And the array insert call we have here will insert the word teal at index four, which is the fifth spot in the list. So if you go one, two, three, four, teal will actually be inserted where blue is. And then blue and vi uh, purple will come after that. Removing values from an array is done using array remove. Uh, it takes in the array that you want to remove the value from as a parameter, uh, the location of where you want to remove that value, and then how many values to remove. So here we're removing the colors orange and yellow from our color array. Uh, orange is at index one, and we want to remove two values, so we pass in two for that third parameter. Two other uh, functions that are available to you for removing arrays are um, array values are array pop and array shift, and these remove the last value or the first value from the array, respectively. Uh, very useful um, in, there's lots of applications for this. Um, one common one you might run into is where you just need to process an array, you only want to go through it once, and maybe you're you're moving all that information into a different format, and uh, either shifting or popping it out of the array makes it quite easy to work with. We have um, some functions for manipulating arrays. Uh, in addition to inserting and removing, we have a sort function that will sort the values. The sort takes the array and what direction you want to sort. And that sort direction can be up or down for string values and up numeric, down numeric, all one word lowercase for numeric values. So I've got two examples here. This first one will sort colors down so the word yellow will come first and blue will come last uh, and then over here an array sort nums it's up numeric so it'll go one three one two three five seven uh, after you sort it we also have searching um, searching array index of is probably the most common one you'll use we have a few others they're more complex we're not going to go into them in this presentation but they are documented um, array index of will search for a value in an array and it returns the index if it doesn't find it you're gonna get a value of negative one which means it's not in there so here in our colors array we're looking for orange and array index of is going to return one because orange is in the zero one position Array copy, uh, copying arrays. Uh, this is something important to remember. Um, you can assign an array to another array simply using equals, but under the hood, you're working with the same object. So if you want to work with a copy of an array without affecting the original, you need to use array copy. And so here, plants array, when I call array copy, I will have also plants. They will have the same values, but if I manipulate also plants, it's not going to affect my original plants array. Splitting arrays, if you need to create uh, a subarray, um, want to split on like a middle value or something like that, array slice is what you're going to want to use. And here, it takes your array where you want to start, where you want to end, which is an index value, not a count, uh, which is different from some of the other functions we've looked at. Um, here in this example, we've got array slice where slicing or our colors array into a warm and cool list. So red, orange, and yellow, zero to three is where it ends. So it's not gonna include three, which is green, but it'll include zero through two. He'll put that in warm. And then three through five, five is like the length. Uh, so it'll include green and blue, but there's nothing beyond that. So that will create our cool array. Merging arrays, the opposite of splitting. This, um, this function takes two arrays and returns one. 
So it doesn't affect your original arrays, but it will create a new array that contains all those values. And what it does is it appends um, all the entries in the second array to the first array and then returns that as your new array. In addition to manipulating an array, there are ways to convert arrays to other data types. Array join will convert your array into a string. Um, it takes your array as a value. And also the separator you want to use to con 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 concatenate everything together. Uh, this example, I've, it passes in a comma. So this A, B, C, D, E is going to return a comma separated string uh, with a space afterwards, A, B, C, D, and E. Uh, as a string. And this array join, um, this is going to look similar for you who are familiar with JavaScript. There's a array join there as well. So that's the, um, that's the list of common array functions I wanted to point out. Um, and then the thing that we're going to focus on today in our example are objects arrays, which are arrays of objects. And one object array you will encounter in TPL is QList if you work with lists. Uh, the other one you're going to run into is if you create any, um, oh, I've already forgotten what they're called. Dave, remind me, is it data group? Data group. So, data groups. Yep, yes, you got it right. <laughs> I remembered it. <laughs> no, you, got it. you got it in one. You're going to say child records or something, right? Is that no, no. Before? So, so okay. you can create data groups in your forums, which allows uh -huh. you to add multiple entries of the same set of records, like a bunch of images that all have a description. And in your in your TPL form data, that's going to be presented to you as an object of array, an, yeah, an array of objects, basically. So those are the, the queue list, which is um, drop down list data, and then your, your data groups. Both of these things are going to be arrays. So. Right, so if you had like, uh, a form that was an invoice and you had a whole bunch of line items, then presumably you'd be working with that array of objects to calculate how much they yes. all added up to. Yes, you would. You'd be, oh. yeah, you'd have, you'd be working with an array of objects if you wanted to iterate through all that and do some sort of in-place computation in your form. Gotcha. Thanks. So working with those object arrays, there's a couple of functions I, I wanted to point out that are more complicated than the ones we've just looked at, but very, very useful. Um, and the first one is array first index. This is searching an object, an array object. Um, and this is different from our array um, index of, in that you have to give it a test, and the test references object values. So um, we have this, this object here. This is a presumably represents a form uh, field. And in, and in it, it has um, a value called price. So products.price uh, on, or products, uh, oops. So products is an array. So like products uh, at one dot price would be the value you're testing. And it could have multiple values. So what array first index does is it looks through this object and it, it and it performs this test on each each entry in that array and if it passes this test so if the value of this price field property is greater than 30 then it's going to give you back the index the first one that it found that has that uh, if it doesn't find it it's going to give you negative one just like the other array search and then also there's a, a sort object array um, array sort object value and you give it your array and your sort specification and that sort specification in the the doc it just appears to be a single argument but it can be defined as a series of uh, comma delimited pairs so here we've got our list of choices and we're going to sort, sort by the property value and we're going to sort it down or here we've got our stock um, and we're going to sort by price up numeric, so in ascending order. And then after that, name up uh, in, a, in ascending order in case there's any cases where the, the price is the same, then we sort by the secondary value. And you can have as many of those as you need. Um, there's another notation that I'm not going to show you. I feel it's a little bit um, trickier. It involves specifying your entire sort spec 
as a single string. Uh, that is documented, and you can certainly check it out. Uh, if it's easier for some of you to think about your cert specification as a string as opposed to multiple parameters that you pass in, that may be of more use for you. So what we're going to do now is, is do a demo. Um, I've set up a form in advance. And it's it's going to show you how to use QList. So let's go take a look at, at what I'm talking about here. So I'm in Transform here. I'm in the designer. And I'm working with this object and arrays demo. And this is my uh, little preview here. I've got this colors field. There's a button. There's a couple buttons. And then it's displaying this value for current language. And if we go in here and we look at the form, um, colors is a, a list. And I've got some sort of pre-populated default values here, but these are never actually used. And I'll, I'll show you why in a moment. I've got a sort button. Uh, the action on here is sort, and I've given it a color of green. And then in here, I've got two other buttons. Uh, this is German. The color is indigo. This other one is English. Its color is also indigo. Uh, and what this uh, purpose of having these two buttons here is to show you how to repopulate an array. And then finally, I've got this read-only field down here that just displays what the current selected language is in our form. So all the the TPL for here for this form, if you guys remember, is down here. It's in this edit custom code section. If you can't find this, it's in advanced features. And you have to click this yes radio button to enable uh, selecting this to open up the TPL editor. And in here, I've got uh, I've got code in several events. So what I want to do before we go into this is show you um, what the form does when it's live. So if you give me a moment here, I need to uh, set this up real quick. Turn on uh, my screen share mirroring here. And I'm not getting, am I on the right? I'm on the right network. My screen sharing app isn't loading up here. Hold on a sec. Please hold. <laughs> There we go. I got it working. All right. Let me just pull up and transform here and show you guys. Uh -huh. So yeah, you should be able to see my phone. So yep. this um, the objects and arrays form. I've already got it up in here. Uh, this is the um, this is what we were looking at. This is colors when I tap on it displaying all my colors in English. Um, if I tap sort, we go look at colors again. They're sorted in alphabetical order. If I click the Deutsch button, it will repopulate everything in German. And then again, if I sort it, everything is sorted alphabetically. And then just one more thing. If I select a value here, I've got this set up so that it will automatically keep our selected color whenever I switch that, that language. Cool. So to, to make this work, I have um, trying to think about the best. So let's let's start with that that drop down list. I'm going to editor. So when the editor for the drop down, which is this this list right here is shown. It calls this event on editor. And this event is passed an argument. And args1 will get the value of that argument that's been passed in. And it's an object. And you can assign that to 
any variable name you want. I've used list choices here. In our documentation, you may see the variable name s used. Um, it doesn't really matter what you use here. But what does matter is that it has a property called QList. And QList is an array of objects that contain um, the values value and an optional value called text. Value is the value in the dropdown list. So what the selected value in here is. And text is what is shown. So for this example, I've only specified value for these lists. I don't need text because the text in the that is shown and the value that is stored is the same in both cases. Uh, so you only, I only need to specify the one. And the place where, I, the way I did that is I've used global variables. So here you see this uh, up caret list choices. And just real quick, can you guys, can you read this or is it too small? A little bit bigger would be, yeah, if bigger. you just do a, maybe two sizes bigger. Let's see if I can do this without. Control, control plus should do go. it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Perfect. There we go. So uh, um, awesome. what you got here is you got your carrot and then list choices. And where I've set up these global variables, this one in particular, uh, there's a few others, uh, which we're going to see now, is I've put them in the, the load event handler. And load is called when that form is opened. So if we go look in load, you'll see a few things here. First, you'll see this colors E being created, which is an array. And then I've used array push to add an object that contains a property called value, and I've assigned that property the value red. So um, this creates one um, property in an object and assigns it red. If I wanted more, I would add another comma. I would give it the next value would be the name of the next property, comma, the value of that property, so on and so forth. And I've, I've done that here for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and purple. And E is, stands for English. I've also created colors G for German. Um, same thing here, but here the values being assigned are, are Ger German translations. And then I've stored both of these into two global variables, one called list choices English, the other one called list choices German. And then the last thing I do here, and this is just a, a real quick check that the list contains the correct values if I go away and come back, is I check the language, and if it's English, then my Current active list choices is a copy of the colors E array. Um, otherwise, my list choices is a copy of colors G. Now, I could have, instead of using colors E here, used this global variable, which I will do later because I won't have access to colors E since it's a local variable. Uh, but for simplicity here, that's all. That's what I did uh, in this uh, on load. So this list choices here is the thing that contains the current active array, uh, which, as a reminder, is populated here into the queue list. Um, so uh, let's take a look at the sort button next. Um, sort, as you may re recall, sorts all the choices in alphabetical ascendant order. That's defined here in our sort button event. and all this does is all I do is I call array sort object value on our current list of choices. I want to sort by the value, and I want to sort sort it up. And value, as you remember, is this is this object here, the the, the value in our object that's in the array. Uh, so it's going to check value and it's going to look at the value and sort based on these these values here. Cool. So the last thing, uh, before I continue, where, are, are there any questions on that, what we've covered so far? I don't see that any questions have come in just yet. So All right. we're good. So, oops, sorry. Whoa, well, something about tacos. <laughs> Forget it, I'm leaving. I'm having tacos, apparently. <laughs> tacos on TV. The last thing we'll look at. <laughs> Is how how we implemented this English and and English German and German. Mm -hmm. German buttons. Yeah. And both are implemented effectively, basically the same way. Uh, let's look at uh, the German one first. Um, and let's see if I can make this a little bit wider to make sure nothing wraps. All right. So this this function is called or yeah this button underbar Deutsch is called when the 
that button is clicked. This is the event for it. Um, and in it, it, we do a few things. Uh, the first thing I do is I get the current value uh, in the colors field, which is our drop down. And I store it away in this, this current selection. Because what I want to do here is figure out the index in whatever the assumed current active list is uh, so that I can select the correct index in the list of choices we're going to populate with it and set that as the current value. Um, so we use this array first index, um, which will search an object, uh, an array of objects. Um, I'm going to search my English list here. And I give it color test. And color test is this, uh, is this comparison. It, it says if value is equal to, and then I concatenate the current selection here, ampersand concatenate strings together. Uh, and the other thing I need to do is I need to escape the double quote. So the value is quoted in the comparison. So it's a string comparison. And then I capture that value and then I check it, uh, make sure that it's uh, not negative one. If it's negative one, I'm gonna clear out that value because it means whatever the current value is, it doesn't exist in that choice list that we're looking at, which might mean that it's blank. Uh, it might also mean that I've screwed up somewhere and the current list of choices is actually German. Um, so either way, I, I wanna clear that out. I don't want it to keep it. Uh, but if it does find an index, then I'm going to say, hey, the value of colors is the value from the German list at that index dot value, because this is an array of objects. So if I want to return whatever that German color value is, I need to include dot value at the end uh, so that it's getting the value and not the object itself. Um, if you forget to do this, you will have a value in your list that is called object object and you'll know it when you see it. Um, and then, uh, so after I've determined what the new value is, when we switch that list over, I then say, hey, list choices, you're a copy of our German options. And then I set the language to Deutsch, so I know what the current language is. And if we look at the English button, it's exactly the same code, except that instead of searching the English list for the current choice, we search the German list, we capture the English value, and then we copy the English list into the list of choices and set our language to English. So they're basically doing the same thing. Uh, I could have um, simplified this a little bit by putting this um, code into a function and then just told it which, which lists I want to swap between. Um, but I don't think we've covered functions just yet. So uh, we haven't. Jump. That'll be next. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming next. Spoilers. Yeah. So. <laughs> So that's the code. That's that's all that's to this list. Um, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's pretty. There's actually quite a lot yeah, involved with both lot objects and yeah. and arrays and and figuring out the dot notation and all that. So yeah. yeah. And then well, one one more thing I just wanted to share with you guys is this tester, because while I was working with this example for you today, I kept doing it wrong. <laughs> I right. couldn't figure out what. It ended up being that I was using a single equal value here instead of double. Uh -huh. But you can come into this designer, and I'm actually going to zoom this back out because it's not so valuable that you can read the code here so much as see what's going on. But in this tester, uh, you can actually select these different functions. Like, So I can come down here and say on load, go look at my global variables here on the side here, and just run this function and watch it execute all my code and then create my little global global lists, mm -hmm. then I can go over and say, all right, um, let's pretend we've uh, clicked the German button and let's pretend here in the local variables, that's or the, the fields here, I'm gonna click this edit icon, hit enter and add colors, that's the name of my field. I'm gonna say it was like green or whatever, comma, cause this is JSON and I'm gonna set up this environment, say I've the user is selected green and then they've tapped this button and I just want to test that. So I can I can step through here and go over here to the local tab, I hope. Maybe I need to do that before, before I uh, started clicking on things. 
just step through that. Oh, you know, there's this, hold on. That little GoToMeeting panel, that is very helpful. <laughs> oh, it, it hit the save button, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you edit it, make your you edits, save click Save, yep. uh, and then uh, pick the thing you want to run, go over to your local tab and step through it. And now you can see it's like, oh, the current selection is green. Um, there's my color test. That's the test that got created. All right, the value is equal to green. All right. Step through that. It says, oh, it's an index three in our in our list of choices. If I can't remember what that list of choices is, I can go over here and look. Um, I can also just come down here and type in uh, carrot list choices English and enter. And it will display this really helpful object, 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 object. I'm like, oh, OK, that's not very helpful. But uh, <laughs> you can you can use this interactively while you're stepping through it. So it says mm -hmm. index is three, which means that uh, colors should get changed here to whatever was in German. We go look at colors. Look at that run has been selected. That's what I want. And then continue. And then list of choices. If I look at my global variable, list of choices should be our German list, which is down here. So I can verify that got set. And then one more time, and if we check our, our language, has been set to uh, Deutsch. So this is very, very helpful. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, setting up your environment uh, to emulate what the customer, what your user might have chosen, uh, is done through this interface over here on the side. Nice. Um, and can you share this form design for people who would like it? Yeah, I can. Cool. So if you want a copy of it, send an email to tfservice at alphasoftware.com. We'll send it over. Very right. good. So, Sarah, thanks very much. It looks like you've come to the end of uh, today's discussion and uh, don't have any questions. So I just want to thank you very much for going over this. I know this is this is the part that took me a little bit longer than the other parts to get in TPL. The functions and the fields and stuff, those are all fine, but uh, it, it took me a little while to wrap my head around it. I'm not a super skilled programmer, so but uh, but I can definitely do a lot with TPL once I, once I figured out how that all worked. All right, so thank you everyone who showed up today. If you've got any questions, go ahead and send us an email to tfservice at alphasoftware.com. We hope to see you next Tuesday at our next Transform Tuesday. Take care and stay well. Bye-bye.